Uh, guess what I'm going to do? What? So, like two years ago, I wrote this one short film that I wanted to make. And I was kind of gearing up for it. And there's always, you know, you can always find a reason to not do something. You know what I mean? To, yes. You're like, well, it's, I got to make sure I got the, these actors and the location. I don't know. You know, and you kind of put it off. Then like a little bit of time goes by and then you kind of th think about it again. Maybe I'll do this other one. I wrote another one that I wanted to do. And then I was kind of gearing up to do it in 2020 when the pan pandy hit. And it was like, every, you know, you couldn't do anything. And I started, and I wrote another one. And these are things that, like, you know, they're like just stories that I've always, you know, I liked writing these, these shorts. So I call up my friend Rami. Um, we're talking about maybe doing one. And then I got the idea, I go, look, I have this, this window of time during this tour that's very, it's very limited. Um, and instead of shooting one, we're shooting all three. Mm. And the idea will be that we will make this be like my own episode of television. That's nice. Uh, that I have no notes on. It's, it's exactly best. what I want to make. And I can't announce the cast yet, but I have like some real talent in this thing. It's exciting. Yeah. Good for you. So paying for it myself, flying out there, Good. shooting it, and... I don't know where it'll end up. It, you know, it could end up on the YMH Studios thing, or it would be like a whole date, like premiere for us. Could end up somewhere else, but we're doing it. It's amazing. Yeah. You know, I think what we've learned through the pandy mm -hmm. and doing this show and podcasting in general is that notes suck. Yeah. And you don't realize that. Do when, what you, yeah. When you get hired by a network or you're on television, you're so restricted in what you can say and do and how you can act and what you can say when you're not filming the show even on do you know how many so horrible. notes of value i've received over the years i mean honestly i'm talking about collectively stand-up television screenwriting and book writing i would say i got really good notes from my publisher who i wrote the book with suzanne O'Neill. she she actually i would read her notes and be like these are fucking good notes and that's a crazy feeling to have in television you know, the multiple pilots and things I've been a part of, I've probably thought that one out of like eight of them were good, like regularly good notes. Uh, screenwriting, pretty much the same. And in stand up, <laughs> it's very rare to horrible. get notes. Like most people's notes are horrible. Well, because most people, if they don't do stand up, you know, you don't even respect their no, notes. No, I don't listen to any uh, their thoughts. Stupid I'm like, do you do stand up? And they're like, no. I'm like, oh, why don't you eat my fucking asshole? Because you have no idea. You have no I'm... idea what you're talking about, and you suck, and you're a talentless pile of shit telling me what to do. I know. Well, the reason yeah. notes suck from yeah. television networks is because they're selling advertisements. Yeah, of course. And also, those people. Not only that, those people aren't creatives. Like. The best notes you'll get for television writing is from another writer, right. somebody who writes. Right. So I'm saying that the notes often come from the executives yeah. who are in the business of, of selling, selling ads. ads. Yeah. So when they look at you on your creative project, they go, oh, it's the Tom and Christina show. Yeah. Well, we need to sell ads um, from General Electric, from whatever bah, 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 companies, and we can't have them saying these certain things because yeah. that'll turn off buyers yeah hands so, down it's horrible that's it's, why sitcoms are terrible it's a it's, a, it's so bad i mean the, the idea that you would anyone now would watch a sitcom i'm like what's going I on know. with you the um the best stand-up notes i've ever received were from stand-up comics for yeah, sure of course yeah because it's it's yeah. a pure form stand-up yeah. comedy is the one of the and podcasting now is the last pure form of entertainment free you, expression no one can fucking tell yeah. you yeah. um and Actually, then, I had one legal note in my special, one legal note. I had to change the inflection on a joke. Uh, I'm not going to go into what it was about, but dude. that was the one legal note. And they're like, you talk about your children. We need to have them sign release forms so that they don't sue you. And I was like, I was like, well, hold on a second. 
I'm their guardian, so I'm going to sign the form for them saying that they're not going to sue me. How does this make any kind no. of sense? I won't even hold up in court if they want to sue me a million years later, but whatever. The uh, notes you get on, on uh, uh, the funniest ones I ever got was when I did Comedy Central Presents. I don't know if you remember. They gave you notes on that? It wasn't, they didn't give me notes. They gave me the, like the legal, what's it called? Like, uh, there's a yeah. department. I yeah, forget yeah, what it's called. Yeah, yeah, they have called. to clear your Standards jokes. and practices? Yes. And they were like, <laughs> no, they were the like, worst. you cannot, and it was like, it's all, it's very matter of fact. That's the funny yeah. part. It says, your joke about how Indian people smell. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, this is not permissible because yeah. it implies that they are not in con like it was like a reasoning for it yeah. they're like the puerto rican stabbing is fine <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it was like do not yep. say this and then it would like it would like type out racial slurs like these words are fine <laughs> you can't say this but you can say yeah. this yeah yeah because i there's a i've i've never done late night yeah. Um, stand up sets on late night television for this exact reason is that you go through rounds and rounds and rounds of notes. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I just don't care enough to change the act. Oh my God. Those five. I mean, it actually, here's the thing it is very annoying, but it makes you respect the people who have that skill set of doing like tons of late night spots. It's a totally different muscle. It's a skill set. Yeah. You know, um, who's done a bunch of them? Like Chad Daniels. Yeah. Tommy He's John so again. Funny. Um, I think they've, they've really done like, like, you know, there's a bunch of comics I'm leaving out, but like, do it, like they can just nail that and like, mm -hmm. and shape it. And it's like a killer set and you see it. It's not like, my skill set. I'm terrible. It's short, short yeah. TV. Well, you friendly. get also, you get accustomed to doing these long sets where you establish kind of everything. Yeah, yeah. And tone. That's why it's like, and... that's where like the best, like the people who like are joke slingers, like really shine is in those five seven minute sets it's, it's impressive yes it is my dream well that's exciting i can't wait to see it because i know you've i am been... so excited I'm, i mean i'm investing a ton in it it's a huge undertaking it's like essentially we're shooting feels like a movie you know but we're doing mm -hmm. it in a, a really short period of time but it's like i mean the team i have together is nuts it's gonna be great i have people that work like the Marvel people doing it's great prosthetic stuff i mean i got like but see this is what television or entertainment should be mm -hmm. where you you let talented people creative people do what they want let the creatives do it i know it's like how it's been it's been such a struggle with with traditional television for years for creative people yeah because it's all these hand bindings of like well, we have yeah. to sell ads and what if we offend people we're gonna lose the it's like dude stop it stop, stop. making buttered noodles yeah. for people and i should point something out it's possible because of you like because that's true you guys are the ones that actually make this possible because you guys have been so supportive of what we do that it's an encouragement to take this risk. It's a risk, you know, it's like a, it's a shot. You're going like, I'm going to try to make this thing that hopefully people respond to. And you don't know yeah. how people are going to respond to it, but like you're only able to take those shots because you have the support of like a fan base around you. So I'm yeah, super thank appreciative God. of it. Thank God for the interwebs. It really changed everything. It did. It really yeah. desuckified entertainment. And it's put, you know, it's put these twats, these fucking yeah. jack off executives yeah. who thought they were like, I'll, I'll tell people yeah. what they get to do. Now you see people just doing what they want. This is an thing. example of it. You see it with specials, right? Where like, People, you know, we have to beg to get a special. And then now you see people, they go, oh, I shot my special and it's on YouTube. Yep. And that's actually a brilliant move because then the fan base evolves from that. You yeah. Know? And also You're not asking permission. But, but that's the, that's right. The butter noodles approach. This is why radio sucked so bad. It's called butter noodles. Everybody will eat them. Nobody really loves, maybe one or two guys yeah. love eating butter noodles, but yeah. everybody will eat it. It's okay. Yeah. Everybody. So so now entertainment's like, you don't have to make bland, awful shit that you kind of like, not really. Oh, yeah. You can go specific. How many people do you need to like your stuff to have a great living? It doesn't have to be that many. And like, speaking of radio too. Yeah, it's not that many. Right? It's you just need a many. few, like 2,000 people need to like your shit and you can sell to them and There's that's it. so many radio shows that have oh my God. collapsed because God. they also did, they just listened to the ad reps going like, no. Yeah. You know, here's the thing though, AutoZone needs to run their ad on this thing. So therefore, make sure you don't make a 
but don't make a joke about this. And you're like, well, what? That and like the formatting of radio, they discovered, oh, I forget what the name of the radio guy is. He discovered that there's formats. Like that's how they got all these different stations, yeah. like top 40, classic rock, hip hop, everything became yeah. so gross and like systematic yeah. and boring, yeah. Thank you for watching that highlight here from YMH Studios. That was a highlight or a clip, whichever word you prefer. You watched it and there are so many more. Little bite-sized episode things. They're, in, they're Just click them. Maybe it's someone screaming or bleeding. Maybe it's just laughing at someone, making fun of them. <laughs>